Time for Cinderella to get a nice, pretty, TIG welded, stainless steel custom exhaust. <laughs> We are back in the garage with some brand new parts. We got this sweet gas tank that weighs approximately zero anythings. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got stuff to make a custom exhaust. We've stored it up some inch and a half stainless tubing. Uh, you know, there's some bends. We can cut it and rearrange it. And then a piece of straight. And something that resembles a muffler. <laughs> super pretty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's gonna be loud, but it does have a little bit of baffling in there. When we get all that done, we can um, work on some chain guards and tensioners and stuff, because uh, everybody's been worried about chains coming off and destroying parts of us. We decided it was time to have more options for welding, so we got a um, TIG set up. It uses the same welder we already had, it's just we had got the torch and the foot pedal. So I've been practicing. Right now it doesn't matter, but now we can do stainless with this. The old pipe was super broken. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't the right shape, so, but we're gonna just use the end of it here and weld on the new parts, but uh, the sparks are white. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's a special kind of stainless steel. Maybe it's titanium. It is super lightweight, so. Time for Cinderella to get a nice, pretty, TIG welded stainless steel custom exhaust. <laughs> My thought is here, I'll cut it about there and then there so that then I can put a piece of straight that'll bring it out a little ways, and then we'll use the other half of the elbow and bring it down, because there's really no other option. I know we're gonna get a million comments about, oh, you should have run it through the back like a regular car, but like, there's just no space, none at all. So, <laughs> this is what we really got the TIG for, is doing stainless exhausts. As it turns out, this is titanium, because uh, it doesn't stick to this. So that means that now I have to make a flange like this out of something else, and I don't think I have any other stainless pipe. I'll look around, but uh, we'll probably just have to make it out of mild steel. Nice and simple, basically, you know, same shape and idea as the, as the Barbie car was, just cleaner and prettier. Yeah, it's made what? with nice new stainless instead of random bits of old whatever the heck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's gonna be way lighter than the one that was on the Barbie car. That one was heavy. Huge thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video and helping us complete the Princess Jeep. Simply Safe is incredibly effective, reliable home security. It's all monitored by professionals 24-7 who will call you in an emergency and send police if help is needed. It's really easy and intuitive to use. Simply Safe has some really thoughtful features like reminders that you left your door open and little tiny sensors that you'll hardly even notice. They have fair and honest prices with no contracts or hidden fees. Simply Safe is equipped for worst case scenarios. It'll still work if you lose power, Wi Fi, or even if the system is attacked. The setup process is really simple and easy. The only tools you'll need is maybe a screwdriver. We set it up in my house this morning in like half an hour. 
The monitoring center will directly notify the police in the event of a break-in. I'm interested in Simply Safe for my house because I'm thinking about renting it out for vacation rentals when I'm on vacation elsewhere. So Simply Safe will allow me to keep track of everything and keep it safe when I'm gone. Please visit simplysafe.com/ghpc to learn more. Looking pretty good, huh? Yeah. Like it's just cleaner and tidier. Like you can see every time there's a little hole or a gap or anything. Mm -hmm. So right here, I'm not using any filler rod. I'm just fusing the two pieces together. The exhaust is done, looking pretty killer. Now we just need the hanger. Which we're gonna make with stainless steel as well, so it matches and looks pretty. That really does the trick. We've got the exhaust and the gas tank done, so next up uh, in terms of rideability is chain guards. Uh, chain guards slash tensioners. So this chain uh, mainly just needs a guard so that your leg doesn't get eaten. I might build in a little bit of a tensioner or at least a guide into it um, since this chain doesn't actually have any uh, uh, adjustment. There's no way to adjust the distance between this and that. So um, uh, that one's the primary concern because it's where your foot goes and then after that one's done I'll, I'll add in a this one doesn't really need a guide so, or guard so much as just a tensioner. Um, something just spring-loaded so that it can keep tension while the uh, suspension goes up and down. pretty much all day yesterday building this thing. <laughs> it may not look like a whole lot, but um, it's the chain guard for the front chain setup. Um, and it had to be somewhat structural because there's still a little bit of flex in the frame um, when the uh, power is applied to the belt or to the chain. So this will help stiffen that up a little bit. Um, and also it has the tensioner built into it so that we can adjust the chain tension. You just tighten this bolt and it pushes this up. There we go. It pushes that up and pushes up on the chain. And this, this little piece of plastic here is 
It's called UHMW, it stands for ultra high molecular weight. So it's um, it's made for like slides and wear wear bars and stuff. So it it should take the friction of the chain, chain just fine. I mean, it'll wear out eventually, but it'll last a long, long time. Just slides down over the axle here. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Everything's a tight fit in this little thing. It's kind of the nature of it. Yeah. There we go. It just bolts right onto the engine, kind of where there used to be a little tiny chain guard on the dirt bike. There's that little guard that just covers the front spr sprocket. It bolts to those two locations. Yeah, that's perfect. Really easy to adjust too. Super easy. It's right underneath. You can just reach under there with a wrench and just boom. Yeah. Swapped out this rear sprocket for a slightly larger one that we already had um, because I think it could still benefit from lower gearing. And also, um, with as small as the sprocket was, these chains, both sides of the chain were so close together that with a tensioner on there, they would basically touch each other. And there has to be some slack in it. When the suspension travels, it changes the tension just a little bit. So there has to be some slack when it's at full extension so that when it's at full compression, it's not too tight. But then the chain tensioner will, that I'm about to make will take, take up that slack. So that was another reason for putting the bigger sprocket on is to allow a little bit more play there. decided to change some things up because we need an extra carrier bearing in the middle of the axle so that it doesn't get bent by all the torque. Um, and to make a stronger mount point for that and the chain tensioner, I'm gonna add in another one of these bars on top opposite the other one. So I've got it bent, uh, I'm just gonna cut it and fit it in there. But that way we can mount the carrier bearing in between them and it'll be way stronger. came up with this, what I'm going to do is tape this marker on here, and I'm going to use this to space it up, and then I'll spin it around. Kind of ironic that the only Cinderella logo on the whole Princess Jeep needs to be cut off for the engine that's going to go right about here. So there won't be any Cinderellas on Cinderella, but we'll find some stickers and add her back later. keep a lot of the plastic on the hood, which is really exciting. This time we did a much more precise cut, so it fills in all the gaps. We got the hole for the coolant, and I'm really excited that we got to keep these little fake clips, because they are very GB. <laughs> and then the real clip actually still fits, and will actually help 
the hood stay latched. It won't be able to pry open, obviously, but it has the look we are looking for. We still don't have the extra carrier bearing here, but I finished the chain tensioner. Um, actually, I was able to reuse the whole arm section here from the chain tension I built for the scooter back before, way back before I put the uh, chain case on it. So when it flexes, because of this, the rotation of this, it actually puts more tension on the chain. So in theory, that's even less likely to come off. but this engine is very tired. <laughs> it was when we got it in the bike, it just barely ran then. Once you got it running, it ran okay. Um, and then when we started it up for the last episode, again, it took us like half an hour of kicking to get it started. We tried to start it this time and just finally gave up. It's just, it needs, the valves adjusted really bad. It probably needs some new rings. So the next episode, we'll pull the engine out and uh, freshen up the top end a bit and get it running better because with the kicking situation on this, it's got to run pretty good or it's a pain to start. So, um, yeah, that'll all happen in the next video and maybe we'll even fill in these side panels and, you know, get it a little bit closer to looking finished. Oh yeah.